Liverpool is a Kenyan registered NGO um, and our concern is uh, anything and everything related to HIV, specifically around prevention, care and treatment. These are the kind of tents that we use for, for, uh, for doing the mobile VCT. So we also have a truck where we, can, where we can perform VCT as well. So we take these out into the community, set them up and then do a lot of mobilisation. Um, so the mobilisers go out into the community a couple of days beforehand and then raise awareness about the services, that the services are going to be there. And then people come and, and get counselled and get tested. You can see inside. It might be too dark, but basically it's got everything, everything that you need to set up a clinical space. So all of the HIV test kits, the penis model for condom demonstration, um, water for hand washing and everything else. Then upstairs we also have a training department and we run training on, we run 13 different trainings. Um, the shortest training is five days and the longest is, is uh, three and a half weeks. We have a really, really big research department. So at the moment we're doing research around post-rape care, um, around the, um, the use of PEP, post-exposure prophylaxis, in the management of, of sexual violence to prevent HIV infection. And this is our, our data department, which is normally extremely busy, extremely full, but because there's no electricity today, it's a little bit empty. So, this is the hotline. The essence of this program is that we put out a free telephone number um, which we advertise through, through various different places. So this is one of the places where we advertise. Um, this is like a youth, it's like a youth magazine which has a, quite a wide distribution throughout Kenya. I mean we receive calls from a variety of callers of people. But our target audience, our target group is young people. The youth, in this case, age between 10 to 24, people will call um, asking, you know, if they can get infected through anal sex or if they are practicing homosexual activities, where they can get infected with uh, HIV and other STIs. But some people will just know they are gay, even when they are 11, when they are 12. But in a society whereby people don't talk about gay issues, then if somebody just had this attraction to the same sex, immediately they, they, they condemn themselves. Now whatever they are feeling is very wrong, it's very abnormal. The reason that is so significant is because HIV prevalence, particularly among young gay men, is extremely high. We have a national prevalence in Kenya of about 6%. Um, but when we look at VCT data and we look at HIV prevalence among um, gay identified men and men who have sex with men, we find that we have an HIV prevalence of between 20 and 40 percent, depending on the cohort. We've managed to put men who have sex with men into the national strategy for HIV. Um, we have managed to have men who have sex with men treated as a group that cuts across all policy. So in terms of youth policy making, in terms of um, behaviour change communication policy, in terms of condom promotion and distribution policy, we find now that MSM are being recognised as a group that needs to be addressed. It's a really busy and dynamic organisation um, and it's one of, the, one of the reasons I stay working with this organisation is because it's extremely innovative and it's very, un very unusual in its approach to in its approach to programming. What a lot of organizations do is chase donor funding. So if the donors are interested in funding, say, youth programs, suddenly NGOs will set up lots of youth programs. That's not how we work. What we do, we, everything is evidence-based, everything is research-based. So if we can demonstrate, hey so if we can demonstrate through research that there is a need for a youth program, then we'll establish one and then look for the funding. There is such a strong correlation between visibility and HIV prevalence. The less visible this vulnerable group is, whether it's the deaf and the disabled, whether it's the survivors of sexual violence, whether it's men who have sex with men, the less visible they are, the higher the HIV prevalence. The more visible they are, the more empowered they are to deal with HIV within their communities. 
opinions are perhaps being challenged. Whether those opinions and attitudes are changing yet, it's, I think it's too early to say. <laughs>